All active speakers are considered to be powered speakers and we reviewed many on these channels. However, not all powered speakers are coming with a true active design are similar but not the same. The Acoustic Energy AE1 that we are going to review today was introduced in 2017, based on the original passive speaker AE1 of 1987, so let's do it. So basically in iFi let's say that we have three types of stereo reproductions and one that everybody knows it is with passive speaker so we have our source then the amplifier the crossover that is inside the passive speaker and in the end the speaker driver and this is a simple stereo reproduction that is good when you have space, right? A second type of configuration is done with powered speaker. We review, for example, right now the Klipsch the Sevens, where the amplified signals that could be Bluetooth or wireless is put in a passive crossover, most of the time inside the main speaker, which then powered the driver. And if from one point of view is something really nice because you save a lot of space, you just need the two speaker, you don't need any external source or amplifications. From the other point of view is, the, let's say, a cheaper way to do it because you have all integrated in one main speaker. And of course, integration could mean right also less quality compared to a more extended configuration. And in the end, we have something like the AE1, a true active designs where the amplification that is providing the power for each driver is placed after the crossover. And in this case with the AE1 we have a line level input that could be RCA or XLR and then it's used a full analog crossover to divide frequencies before feeds it to one individual power amp for driver. This it will give you for sure a better quality compared to one amplifier that is designed for doing everything. I generally don't go too much deep in details, but these times I was really curious to see how Acoustic Energy managed to add all these inside such a small cabinet. And since there is no physical connection between these two speakers, as we saw, for example, with Klipsch the Sevens, right, that you have a main voltage coming in one speaker and then one speaker output going to the second Klipsch the Sevens, here we have two power socket, one for each speaker, so you can change left with right, it's absolutely any problem. And nice to find inside the toroidal transformers that together with the amplifier sections is providing a 50 watt class AB amplification. All look really clean and the crossover is tuned at 3.5 kHz. Max SPL output is something around 105 dB, that's a lot. I did some music with Room Echo Wizard from my listening positions and I was happy to see that at 90 dB, for example, the distortion graph look really, really clean over the all frequency range. Cranking up the volumes a little bit more at 100 dB, we start to have a little bit of distortions in the mid range where voices and instruments start to be a little bit shouty. I was feeling that. So 90 dB of reproductions is already, in my opinion, a great high listening volume sections, especially in small mediums room. And I was really satisfied with the amount of volumes and dynamic. The AE1 is available in high gloss piano walnut, glossy piano black or white look really beautiful modern elegant and the construction is really clean i love these round edges 
that not only remind me the acoustic energy AE320 that we review. I had a lot of fun with this speaker, you can find the review in descriptions. But remind me also a movie that I just saw again in Blu-ray, I'm speaking about Oblivion with Tom Cruise. The designs match perfectly the styles of this movie. It's a beautiful and modern, well-made speaker, I really like the designs and the construction quality. MDF 18mm and the speaker is heavier than you might expect, 9 kilograms. On the front we can find a 25mm Aludome tweeter giving the classic acoustic energy sound signature. And under it we have a 125mm ceramic Alu sandwich cone for the base driver unit. Over all these years it's interesting that I compare a lot of speakers that are coming with paper, cone, materials that sound slightly more warm, more natural to these materials that sounds not metallic really, not at all, but are slightly more colored and could sound slightly more crispy if not paired with the right source or amplifications as we will see it later. I forgot to say that there is also a small white LED under the woofer to indicate that the speaker is on. On the back we find an interesting manual volume control so you can use it as manual preamp. It's a little bit annoying, uh, let me show you actually here on the other side probably you will see it also in the video but is as you can see same sections volume knobs and it's a little bit annoying right that you have to use it as preamp because i'm really not sure that you will have to go all the times on the back and adjust the volume here and adjust the volume there for every track and we know that most of the times all tracks are coming with different volumes unfortunately so i really don't see anybody doing something like that because it will be just crazy or you can do like me that i connected the wim pro plus to the two input i let the volumes at maximum or you can let it also a little bit less if you don't want such much power or full power and then control the volume through the winpro plus remote control and in the end we have two separate knobs to control bass and treble with the possibility to adjust both on plus 2 db or minus 2 db and the idea is give you the possibility to equalize a little bit the speaker when are placed closer to a wall for example we have here a bus reflex port right so this will help a lot if you have some boominess on the bass here you can see a speaker measure comparisons where i give a minus two on the bass and a plus two on the treble with minus two affecting bass under 200 hertz and plus two on treble working above 2 kilohertz this for give you an idea of what is doing so two decibel are not a lot but i think is really something helpful especially if you don't have a device that is coming with a dsp like the win pro plus <laughs> setup and placement i as i said paired the speaker with the winpro plus so just two rca cables coming out from the winpro plus you can let it in the middle you can let it above one speaker of course you will need a longer cable that has to reach the second speaker but it's absolutely not a problem not only i pair it also with a second duck but i will tell you this in a second moment first i want to speak about the placement and the positions i try a first configurations uh with a small amount of toe-in in my direction, something standard. And I have to say that the speaker, yeah, sounds to me slightly aggressive, especially in the top end, and also slightly bright with rock and metal music. So I say, okay, let's try to give a minus two dB on the treble from the from the knobs, and it start to sound slightly better, less aggressive, but in the same time it was dull, and I lost this engagement and liveness that was coming out from the Wim Pro that it has these sounds it's warm on the bottom end 
and with a great vibe and life on the top end. Of course, all these tests are done in my room based on my personal taste, right? And it can be that in your configurations will be not like that, but I'm giving you, I'm sharing with you what I, I found. I will set it in my setup and based on my personal taste, a small amount of twin was the best condition. You have to try and of course to have fun. So I keep this setup for about one week and I don't know, something didn't convince me, especially on voices where I found a slight amount of sibilance. Not so much, but the S was slightly emphasized. Then I thought, okay, I have to try another streaming DAC, right? I have the Cambridge Audio Edge NQ, but this is too much expensive. And wait a moment, I have on desktop the RME, the beautiful RME RT2 DAC, incredibly neutral and flat. It will add nothing in harmonics or richness. And that's also why I like it so much, because it's coming with this type of sound that is really clean and neutral. And I connected the DAC and enabled on Cobas the Wasapi exclusive driver. And bang, magic happened. AE1 was now sounding as I wanted because I removed this sibilance amount from the tribbles, was everything more sound more natural and more neutral. Even the bass, where on the Winpro Plus I was need to give a minus two on the AE1 because it was just too punchy and warm, with the RME I did duck, I didn't need at all, I just keep it everything at zero. Triple on zero, bass on zero and sound incredibly good with more details, articulations and separations. Night and day difference? Well, uh, yes, let's say that it was a big, big difference of improvement. And don't get me wrong, the WinPro Plus is really, for the money, is amazing. But with this type of configurations, nice to see that I could improve the AE1 sound quality one or two steps above. But before I jump to sound quality, let me show you one measure that is really interesting. And here we have a left-right channel comparison, of course, right channels in red and in blue, the left channels. No EQ, everything on zero for bass and treble. And just forget for a moment about peak and cancellations under 200 Hz. This is coming from my room's mode, something normal. But we can observe a frequency response of 40 Hz, 16 kHz coming with a top end roll off. And what I found interesting was this red chest between 2-3 kHz. I generally don't have these in my rooms and could give a lack of details on upper mid or a disattached treble. That is something that I felt a little bit, especially on the lower treble that lack a little bit of details and density. I generally measure before my auditions and was interesting to find these things that I wanted to share with you, but now let's move to sound quality. After all that, God, I speak too much. By the way, I found this speaker incredibly good for the money and incredibly transparent, beautiful clarity and dynamics. When I test for the first time the AE320 from Acoustic Energy Passive Speaker, I had a lot of fun, especially for the quick sounds, punchy bass that was controlled and dynamic and nice to find also this in the AE1. sub bass extensions authority on the AE1 is not like the AE320, it will need to be paired with a subwoofer. If you are going to listen something like EDM, like Alban Auto, for example, just take a look of it, really great music, or organ music in classic hip hop, something that is going really, really low. Otherwise, you will not have any problem with the bass performance coming out from the AE1. And I'm speaking about jazz music, but also pop music. It will be snappy, round on edges, and of course clean if well placed and paired it with the right duck. Especially bass drum sounds really good and transparent on the AE1, sign that the mid bass is taking all the spotlight on it. It's really solid, and especially when I listen blues music, wow, was like to hearing floor standing speaker, I'm not joking. So the amount of dynamics, especially on the bottom end, was incredibly good for such a compact speaker. You probably hear Tina Turner, Private Dance, and the intro drum was 
impressive, was so powerful, sucks so sweet and smooth, a great separations and good soundstage. Wide enough, not huge, Tina Turner voice was let's say crispy, slightly amount of siblings coming with the Winpro Plus, not with the RME Ugly to Duck. As I said, guys, Duck matter, believe me or not. Mid-range density was fine, instruments and voices never in my face, and I noticed a small amount of timber coloration. A timber coloration that I will describe as smooth, probably crispy, probably sometimes female voices sometimes lack a little bit of nuance, male voices lack a little bit of body and chest, not so much, a little bit considering the price range and the size, I will say that it's really good, but definitely compared also with the AE320, like a little bit of presence and three-dimensionality. Standard right, compact speaker, floor standing speaker, you got what you pay for, but absolutely beautiful and I really enjoy it. And what I really enjoyed that let me oh god shocked was the imaging and localizations of instruments and really plays as a Dolby Atmos setup configurations in home theater was just crazy. If you have the possibility, please test this track that can dance songs of the stars. Percussions left, right, animals above you, voices on the deepness, incredibly crazy. I was not expecting such a laser focus imaging. Top end, as I said, is slightly crispy and full of life with the Wimper Plus, with the RME was more natural and neutral. Don't expect a tons of air around instruments and vocals. So if you love to hear a lot of air coming out from jazz, sax or trumpet, you will need to spend probably a little bit more. But it's good, it's really good. It's a speaker that sounds good immediately, effortless and I was overall really impressed with the technical performance for an active speaker just crazy. And now let's move to drawbacks, just a small one. As soon you turn it on with the knobs, you have to do it for both speaker, right? One time here, one time there, you will have just the white LED in front of the speaker that it will turn on also, and then you are ready to go, right? And the problem is that you cannot turn it off. There is no remote control, and if you want to turn off the speaker, you have to go here, pack, and also on the other speaker doing the same things. That will be something really annoying, right? I don't see myself going every time behind every speaker, each speaker and turn it off. So I really wish to see at least an automatic standby or a trigger functions, the possibility to connect, for example, your source, your preamps by a trigger will automatic also turn off the speaker. Why it is? I measure the speaker in Standby, but it's not exactly a standby way when there is no input coming on the speaker and I measure say 8.5 watt per hour of consumptions. That is not so much, let me actually read it because you will have of course 8.5 watt and 8.5 watt on the other speaker, so are in total 17 watt per hour of consumptions. That is not a lot, but really interesting I calculated if you decide to let it on right, will be in one year 150. 48 kilowatt. I know sounds crazy, is not so much, of course, 50 to 100 bucks just to let it on all the years if you don't want to turn it off every day, but yes, it's not an eco-friendly speaker, so I really would like from Acoustic Energy to see a uh, trigger functions or an automatic standby. So in the end, technically speaking, you can't compare it to any power speaker that we saw on my channels. Please don't do it. The Acoustic Energy AE1 is one or two steps above. I still prefer a dedicated hi-fi system, so I'm speaking about passive speaker and external amplifier and source, but only because you can combine your favorite speaker in terms of sounds with your favorite amplifications. But I understand tools don't have the space for all these and of course the time, for example, to choose the two things, right? Then the A1 represents a unique solution with a superb value for money. Hard to do better with this budget and separate components. 
But you have to know also that you should go with the AU1 if you are already a critical listener, someone that is taking consideration separations, instrument placement and all this stuff. If you are a casual listener, then go with powered speaker, it will give you more just in a compact space you will don't need to add any source or external duck wi-fi bluetooth hdmi and all this stuff for all the others that looking for something more serious something more high end then active speaker it could be a solution for you is a ultra respectable performance with an engaging and exciting sounds and i took a little bit of time also on reflect about would I love to see it with an internal DAC on board or not? And I really don't know, I'm afraid that it will, meaning to compromise everything, because of course if you had an internal DAC and a streaming capability in the main speaker, you will have to connect also this speaker with this speaker, right? So I'm afraid that it will just cost you more and in the end you will not have the same. Quality. So I think Acoustic Energy did really, really the right choice to let the speaker just with the amplifications and with you guys that you are going to choose what is the right streamer duck for you because maybe you also have one at home, right? And this, it will give you a speaker design, active, true active speaker design that is for life. Because we know it, right? Technology evolves. Bluetooth, streaming apps device it will change over and over the year just now we just saw that a bluetooth lossless is coming so my thing is that acoustic energy did it really in the right way well done from the audio is everything i hope you guys enjoyed this review as always if you enjoyed it please hit the like buttons and take in consideration to subscribe to the channels to support my work see you peace